R1 students. Welcome to our next lesson on how to use Inkscape. This is for Unit 3 and this is for the uh, Lines Lesson A project. Now for this project I've given you an image and I've given you uh, the instructions. So the first thing you need to do is of course open Inkscape and then you're going to Zoom in so that you get this on the screen. Remember, the only thing I can see is what's inside this rectangle, so make sure your work is inside the rectangle. Then go to File, Import. Then go to wherever your image is saved. It's Lines A Image. And you've got this little still life here. Now move this onto your work surface area here. You can make it larger if you'd like. And remember last time how we did layers? We're going to do the same thing with this because it makes it easier. It's very similar to what we did with the logo. So go to Layers, which is Shift Control L, and you'll see that this is layer one. We're going to add a layer, and we're going to call that layer Lines. And we're going to make sure that we're working on the Lines layer. Now, I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer so that you can see a little bit better what we're doing. Well, I thought it was. Oops, helps if I click the right one. Okay, there we go. So now you can see a little bit better what we're doing. And we're going to use the Bezier Curve Tool here, the one with the blue pen, the one with the diamonds that we used to create the shapes in the last lesson. And what we're going to do is we're going to trace around this object. Our brain interprets any change in value, light and dark, or change in color as a line, as a contour. And so you're going to be creating a contour line drawing of this image. So we're going to start out by just picking a spot on the image. And we're going to click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. Now remember, this takes practice and your line probably isn't going to be perfect the first time but that's okay. I'm going to go around and pick up just the first layer here. And then when I get back to the diamond, I'm going to click on that, and there's my line. Now, just like we did before, we can close, oops, see it moved it. So if I get my line on that layer, I'm going to select that line, I'm going to right click, and then I'm going to move that to my lines layer. All right, sometimes that happens. So now let's take a look at the nodes that I've created for this line. And I'm going to zoom in really close so you can see that. And that doesn't look nearly as nice as I'd like, so I'm going to click on those nodes. Remember, the fewer nodes you have, the better. So I'm going to remove a few of these because I probably can get a better line. I'm going to make sure that one's smoothed out a bit there. I can probably get a better line if I just do some adjusting here. Okay, so you're going to adjust your line until you get it just right where you want it. That one's going to go. All right. Only use as many as you absolutely have to have. Because the more you have, the more curves and bends you're going to have in the line, and you're probably not going to be as happy with it. All right, you can check the progress of your line by closing your layer one image and taking a look at it to see how it goes. Now, I'm going to do another line here. Now I'm going to add some more lines and anywhere you see that change in value, double click when you're done if you're not filling in that entire shape. I can click on the smoothing tool to make this more round if I would like. Although I think it didn't do it there, did it?
Well, I love the Right, so you're going to do this for the entire object, making it as detailed as you possibly can. So I'm going to speed this up and I'm going to finish this. Okay, now we've got the picture drawn. And you can see that I drew right over the tops of the orange and the pear. That's because we're going to cover those up. Now, when we finish this, we're going to get rid of that background image. So let me hide that so you can see. There's the contour line drawing of our picture so far. Now, I want to have the, the lines not go through those uh, orange and pear, so I have to make sure that those are filled so that they cover the line in the back. So I'm just going to fill those with uh, white, and I'm going to take a circle, and I'm going to start out making my orange. Don't worry about the fill right now. I'm going to place that circle over the orange. Now I'm going to go to fill and stroke. The stroke I want to be black. And the fill, I don't want any at all. So now you can see that I have changed that so that I can make the orange. And the orange is not a perfect sphere. It's pretty close, but I can change this to paths. And then remember when we have a shape, we go to this figure eight, convert selected object to path. And now I can pull that and elongate it just a little in just the right places to really follow that shape of that orange. If it's perfectly spherical, it's not going to look as realistic. Okay, so there's my orange. And I want to also add an ellipse just kind of for this little stem area here. And that's also going to have to be kind of squished. Let's zoom in to that. Oh goodness, that's really... I'll squish that up a little bit so that it doesn't look quite so weird. Let's move that over here. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this with white so that it covers those background, that background piece. In order to select it, when you have just lines and no fill, you have to just select the line, otherwise it's not going to do anything. So I'm going to fill that, but I'm not going to fill it with black. I'm going to fill it with white, so I get a different palette. There's a tiny little arrow down here that will allow you to go to your different palettes. I want the SVG palette. That's just the one that I like. I'm going to select white. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here with the pear. Now I'm going to start again with an ellipse for the pear. I'm going to stretch that ellipse and I'm also going to get rid of the fill for now because I want to be able to see through it. I'm going to look at that by nodes, convert the path to nodes, and I can stretch and shape that so that I have more of a pear shape here. Remember if you double click on a space in the line you can add another node. So I'm going to do that here and kind of pull that in and kind of get a better pear shape here. Adjusting those handles until I have that shape that I want. All right, now I'm going to draw the stem. I can start with a rectangle for my stem or I can freehand draw it. Or I can start with another shape, but let's let's just start out with a rectangle. Again, we're going to go to um, our node tool. Let's zoom in just a little so that we can see better what we're doing here. That's a little bit hard to see, but I'm going to round this off. But first, I'm going to scoot it in a little bit. I'm going to select that node. I'm going to make it round. So like this one, make it round. And then I could kind of get more of that shape of the stem. I want it to go in here. In here. Remember the key to Inkscape is using shapes, not trying to draw like you would with a pencil or pen. 
All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna fill that with white because I don't wanna see that line behind. So I'm gonna fill that and I'm just gonna go down here and select white. Well, I thought I was. Oh, it's because I don't have it picked. Well, that probably helps. All right, there we go. Um, and this one, the this is behind, so that's why the line is showing. So I'm gonna rearrange that. I'm gonna send that to the back. There we go. Yeah, now I can adjust that from up here. Let's zoom out. And so now you can see that we've got the fruit, we've got the picture, and if I hide that background layer, it's starting to look pretty good so far. So now I need to draw the spoon. I'm gonna go through that same process to draw the spoon. And so I'm gonna speed it up so that you all can see that when it's finished. Okay, now I've finished drawing the lines. You can, on the spoon, let's hide the layer so that you can see there's just the lines. Now I've got this problem of, I can see the spoon through the orange, but that's a layering problem. So what I need to do is select that line and I'm gonna move that to the back so that it'll be hidden behind the orange using these selection tools here. So I'm gonna move that back one. There we go. And now I need to move these other lines as well. And now I have my completed drawing. I can also add the table in there. I forgot to put that in, but I can put the table in. If I want to, I'll go ahead and just kind of give it a little more space in which to reside. There, now my, my still life is kind of sitting on a, a space. And for your next project, you'll be doing the same exact thing, only you'll use a, a photograph of your choice. So you may do a contour line drawing of something that you enjoy. So assignment A is copying the design I've given you. Assignment B is the same process, copying the design of your choice. And then assignment C is an essay on uh, some works of art that I've given you. So I hope this has been helpful and it will help you continue and finish li Lines Unit 3. See you next time. Bye.